Christian Kirk and Khalil Shakir are the two receivers that you need to target to win your dynasty leagues this year. We'll explain why on this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuk. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase term supply. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. And joining me today, as always, is Kate Maju. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can also read her at Pro Football Focus and Behind the Steel Curtain. On today's show, we're taking a look at three receivers that you can get outside of the top 35 of your dynasty leagues that are going to help you win your leagues this year. And Kate, we're going to start with somebody that you and I both really, really like and appreciate, and that's Christian Kirk of the Jacksonville Jaguars. The very underrated Christian Kirk, who it it doesn't really seem to matter what he actually does on the football field. People just still don't want to appreciate this man for what he is actually doing for our fantasy football teams. Now, obviously, like 2023, I think maybe people are a little bit cooler on Christian Kirk than they should be just because of the fact that he ended the year with an injury. It was super unfortunate, but was actually just as productive from a yardage standpoint on a per game basis as he was in 2022 65 receiving yards per game seven targets per game and guess what that was with Christian uh, or with Calvin Ridley playing alongside him on the outside now obviously they brought in Gabe Davis they drafted Brian Thomas Jr. to play along the outside but I still think Christian Kirk is bound to lead this this team and targets per game by an absolute mile as long as he's healthy and and consistently producing I think this is an offense also that like we're kind of getting in on the ground floor in terms of pricing because of the injuries to to you know Trevor Lawrence that I think limited his efficacy last season um and again that like five game stretch to close out the year where Christian Kirk was I don't want to say out of sight, out of mind, but he kind of was. And now I think that's making him a huge value in dynasty. Yeah. I think it's one of the biggest reasons why Jacksonville fell off so much in the second half of the year. I think they went one and four in the five games without Christian Kirk. Um, They really missed him. And that's with having Calvin Ridley. I, I, I love this call. He's being drafted as wide receiver 44 right now, which is, I mean, just insane value. He's averaged People. 65. Yeah. He's averaged 65 receiving yards per game in each of the last two years. You look at the weapons that they brought in, right? Like Gabe Davis. What does Gabe Davis do really well? He stretches the field and he blocks. What does Brian Thomas do really well? He stretches the field. Neither of those players are high volume receivers. I They're mean, not ide- possession guys. No, no, no. Ideally, those are the players that you're taking shots down the field to four to five times a game. It's going to be Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram, who are the the, the receivers here that convert the key third downs and get your drive off you know, to a good start. I actually see Christian Kirk's value going up now that Calvin Ridley's gone. They are just a much different offense when he's on the field. And again, wide receiver 44 for a receiver who is 27 years old. And hopefully, I mean, expected to be in a good offense, sign me up all day long. Yeah. And I really like what you mentioned about like Gabe Davis and the role that he's going to play, Brian Thomas Jr., and the role they're going to play, because I don't think those skill sets are very duplicative. Like, no. you look at what Christian Kirk is meant to do. I think it's very clear kind of the roles that they're carving out for these respective receivers based on their innate skill sets. And Christian Kirk, I think, has one of the more unique skill sets within this offense that's going to complement those guys on the outside rather than kind of having this force of like, you know, you have two possession type receivers, which guy is it going to be every week? 
No, you you know exactly kind of the archetype of these wide receivers. And I think that's going to make it a lot easier on fantasy managers too to make decisions regarding these players in their lineups every week. We should also mention, and you kind of hinted at it, I mean, Trevor Lawrence just wasn't healthy really at any point last year, whether it was the high ankle sprain, he had the knee injury. Remember the knee injury early in the year where we wondered, like, is he just going to miss games because of this knee injury? Tough as nails. He tough is as tough. nails. He, but he that, like, really worked is. against him a little bit. It, it did. And I think the overall offense just saw a big hit. And then when Trevor Lawrence was dealing with a high ankle injury at the end of the year. I mean, he just clearly wasn't the same quarterback. So um, I I really believe in Christian Kirk. And if you need a wide receiver three every week who could give you like middling wide receiver two numbers, I think it's Christian Kirk and you can get him for a song right now. Okay, let's go over some recent trades in Dynasty Leagues for Christian Kirk because I think you're going to be astonished to hear some of the prices. Christian Kirk for a third round pick in 2024. Christian Kirk, easy. Uh, Christian, okay, this one's interesting. Christian Kirk in pick 106 for Kendra Miller in 105. Oh, Christian Kirk. And yeah. this is coming from a person that really likes Kendra Miller. So Christian Kirk for the 209 in a super flex league. I'm trying to think of what players would be available. That's that typically point. like when we did our, our post draft mock, that was where you're drafting like Braylon Allen and Audric Estime and some of those running backs. Yeah. Give me Christian Kirk, mm -hmm. like I mean, a guaranteed contributor. I mean, Marcus over the past two seasons, do you know how many games, uh, well, Christian Kirk's played 29 games over the last two seasons. Do you know how many of those he's had 10 plus fantasy points in and full oh, PPR probably formats? almost every one of them. 18, which yeah. I, even I think like that's that's kind of crazy. 15 or more fantasy points in 13 of those 29 games, uh, you know, 20 or four, sorry, five games of 20 plus fantasy points in full PPR formats. Like for as safe the floor is for a guy like Christian Kirk, I actually think like, especially from a volume standpoint in there's still some ceiling there. Christian Kirk, he's young. He's on an up and coming offense. And I know I feel like we kind of say that every year about the Jaguars, but I really do think 2023 would have been that year if this team had been healthier. So projecting health. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to project a breakout year for this Jaguars offense. And I think Christian Kirk is going to be at the center of it. One last one, Christian Kirk or Joe Mixon. Christian Kirk. Easy, yeah. easy. That's where we've fallen so far with Christian Kirk's dynasty value. So I, I I think he is somebody that I know I'm targeting. I already have him in a bunch of leagues. Go buy Christian Kirk because once we get into the season and he starts producing wide receiver two numbers, we're going to see that value jump up. All right, let's talk about another receiver in a up-and-coming offense with a very good young quarterback. Let's talk about Jaden Reed. Thanks. This episode is brought to you by Game Time with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NFL tickets. Now that the NFL schedules released have already been starting to make plans as to which games I'm going to go to, maybe week one, Cleveland, Dallas. Certainly looking at that Pittsburgh, Dallas game in week five. I'm going to use Game Time to buy my tickets. You can save up to 60% off buying last minutes for, for sports, concerts, comedy, and theater events near you. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code LOCKDOWNNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem promo code locked on NFL for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to the locked on dynasty football podcast. Are you watching Fox sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Are you having to turn down the volume because of all that shouting? Make the switch to locked on sports today, a free 24 seven sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming locked on sports today brings you can't miss analysis opinions and news streaming 24 seven on YouTube 
or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Kate, let's discuss Jaden Reed because he was somebody who I liked a little bit in the pre-draft process. Obviously, he had a strong rookie season, but I'm a little skeptical about a big year two leap coming. What do you think? I'm all in, actually. And this definitely, like, the Packers offense, I think we can all agree, is one that's ascending. I think a lot of the uncertainties kind of lie in the fact that it's really hard to figure out who's who in this offense because they have a lot of young, talented, high upside playmakers. But it's not like there's, you know, one single guy that maybe has the edge in terms of experience. No, like this receiver room in this tight end room, kind of generally speaking, wide open. But I just want to take a minute and talk about what Jane Reed did here in the second half of last season. From weeks 8 through 18, Jaden Reed led the Green Bay Packers in targets, receptions, receiving yards, receiving touchdowns, even at a rushing touchdown in that span, two of them, in fact, um, ranked second in scrimmage yards, only behind Aaron Jones. And I mean, the whole half of the second half of the season, Marcus, was the wide receiver 10 in fantasy points per game. In that span, he ranked third in fantasy points per snap among all wide receivers, the Packers didn't like make any additions this off season. He has second round draft capital. Why aren't we all in on Jaden Reed who right now is being drafted as wide receiver 36 in dynasty startups. Do you think he can be the number one focal point receiver in this offense? I do. I'm, See, I guess- but I'm just curious because he was that he was that dude in the second half of the last season. So now I'm curious, what are your hesitations with Jaden Reed? He's not like the biggest, baddest wide receiver, but I think his skill set is more conducive to, you know, a a possession role that he can be I, I the every so. down guy. I guess I'm just concerned that this offense get is going to be so balanced that between the run game and the passing game, they're going to spread the ball around to two tight ends four or five different receivers. Remember Christian Watson basically missed the entire season last year with a hamstring injury. And I'm not basing my evaluation on Jaden. Christian Reed. Watson is not an every down guy though. No, he's not. He is, he is absolutely correct. not. But I, I do like Dontavian Wicks a little bit. I like Romeo Dobbs. I, I, I like the other weapons in this passing attack. I, I'm wondering if this is going to be a little bit like the chiefs, maybe do a little bit lower of a volume where Everybody eats a little bit, but nobody is really all that useful from a fantasy perspective outside of like Travis Kelsey, and they don't have a Travis Kelsey. I think Jaden Reed is a good player. I think he's a fine value. He's probably just not somebody that I'm – let me just say this. There's other receivers from last year's class that I am targeting a lot more frequently than Jaden Reed. I guess I'm I'm just looking at – the production. Like I, I do think the fact that uh, Christian Watson was injured, maybe that what I am going to say, like the role that he plays that specific role in the offense. I, I don't think there's enough of a significant target share that those two are, are kind of pulling and pushing against. I don't think so they're either. very different players with very different roles in the offense. And Jordan love in the second half of last season, I do think he kind of told us Jaden Reed is my guy and I'm choosing to believe what Jordan love was telling me last year. Again, this is probably just a lot of my pre-draft bias coming through uh, in a negative way, but I've always viewed Jaden Reed as more of a complimentary player. You know, he's a five ten, sub 190 pound receiver who ran in the four fours, which is great but he's not overly fast, not overly dynamic. He doesn't have great size. I think he's a good player, but I question if he's like the, if he ends up being like the unquestioned target leader of this offense, will teams be able to take him away a little bit and make him less effective? I don't know. That's Um, the thing though. Like they, that because of the number of targets in this offense, the number of quality targets, I don't think you can take any one player away because, you know, though Jaden Reed was the top receiver in that second half of the year, 
I don't think anybody's going to argue with you. Like Romeo Dobbs, I love as a receiver. Christian mm-hmm. Watson, like when he's healthy, you have to account for him on the football field. I don't think there's anybody that's going to argue that you're going to be able to ignore any one of these guys because I think they have, uh, for as as inexperienced a receiver group this is, I do think that there's you know a lot of depth there that you have to account for in your defensive schemes. I just I I don't I don't have the same hesitations as you. Now let's let's talk about the value. I mentioned he's wide receiver 36 in this latest batch of dynasty ADP. Let's go through a couple of traits, okay? Mm-hmm. And I I uh I don't know. I, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised when you see Jaden Reed's value. Jaden Reed or Joe Mixon. Oh, Jaden Reed. I'm I'm just not a Joe Mixon guy. Easily. Uh, this one's a little bit trickier. Super flex tight end premium league. JJ McCarthy, Zach Ertz, Zach Ertz in the 401 for Lad McConkey and Jaden Reed. Two players that have a very realistic chance of each leading their respective team in targets in 2024. So what was the top part of that again? It was, was it JJ McCarthy? It's basically JJ McCarthy in the 401 for Lad McConkey and Jaden Reed, unless you do actually think that Zach Ertz is going to contribute here. Uh, moving no, I forward. Do I do not. <laughs> but so like Zach Ertz is basically the throwaway in that trade. Oh, I, I would say that's a pretty even trade. That's like, a I, very, I, do. Very trade. I mean, I, I, again, I know this is uh, probably a cop out. Is it a six point per passing touchdown league? I actually don't know. Um, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking. Yes, it is. Actually, I'm looking at it right now. It, for that reason, I probably would take McCarthy. Um, but it's close. I do think that's a very even trade and probably one that's dependent on what your greater need is. Like if you have a plethora of quarterbacks, you happen to snag JJ McCarthy and you need wide receiver depth. I think that's a great way to break your quarterback depth down into two wide receivers that could be very productive. But I think that's a very reasonable price sure. for Jaden Reed. Um, and this is an interesting one. Justin Fields and Jaden Reed for Michael Wilson, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, who's now been dropped down a peg. He's basically his team's wide receiver three behind Marvin Harrison Jr. and Trey McBride in a 2025 first round pick. Let's say mid to late. Hmm. I probably... I probably would take the Reed side, um, but I don't feel great about it. I, he, here's my issue, Kate. I, he's being drafted at wide receiver 36. I think that's a little low, uh, but I look at some of the names behind him like Keon Coleman. I would rather have Keon Coleman. I, I know I'm not a huge Keon Coleman fan. Uh, some of the other ones that are going behind him, uh, including Christian Kirk, who we just talked about. Um, I like like a Xavier Leggett probably just about the same. You Again, like I feel- Xavier? I I actually I think you're absolutely wilding on this. I think I'm just gonna call you on it. I think your pre-draft notions about I probably am. Listen, are I, infiltrating because I- like Keon Coleman, um, very poor outlook as in terms of his pre-draft evaluation, in terms of his total lack of ability to separate. Obviously, he's 20 years old. There's like a ton of of room for growth and projection there for Keon Coleman, but like. Oh, wait, you, the edge in terms of quarterback, uh, great. Like Jordan Love, you're not going to ding him for, you know, not being Josh Allen. He's still a very good right. quarterback who can deliver a football. Like uh, still a good offense, uh, a good quarterback. Like all of those things, I think, uh, are are on a level playing field. But I would argue right now, Jaden Reed is the better receiver, I mean, period. Speaking of Josh Allen, let's talk about a receiver that he could be throwing the ball to a lot this season and whether or not you should be trading for him in your dynasty leagues. We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and in the NHL. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, 
money lines, player props, more. We've got two really exciting game sixes coming up in the NBA. We're getting closer and closer to the Stanley Cup in the NHL playoffs. And now that the NFL schedule is released, you can go look at every single line for every week of the NFL season. So go check out all that good stuff. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count with FanDuel America's number one sports book. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We are discussing three receivers that are currently being drafted outside of the top 35 at the wide receiver position that are going to help you win your league in 2024. We both love Christian Kirk. We have some mixed feelings on Jaden Reed, or at least I have mixed feelings <laughs> on Jaden Reed. But we're we're uh, in sync here with Khalil Shakir. Why should Dynasty managers be buying Khalil Shakir? I actually just highlighted Khalil Shakir in an article over on Pro Football Focus that dropped today as one of four late round wide receivers that could easily lead their respective team in terms of targets here in 2024. Now, obviously, the Bills traded away Stephon Diggs. We'll call that addition by subtraction based on the vibes, the vibe factor alone. They obviously drafted, uh, you know, Keon Coleman, who again, mixed feelings about, but Marcus, I don't think that the role that Keon Coleman is going to play on the outside as a potential, you know, alpha role, contested catch aficionado, like that skill set is not one that Khalil Shakir is going to contribute. And I think the role he carved out for him in the second half of 2023, like that is going to be absolutely key. Now in the second half of 2023, he got off to a slow start, ended up playing 60 or more percent, 60 percent or more of offensive snaps in 10 of the bills, 12 final games in the season. He had 50 or more receiving yards in four of those outings plus two 100 yard games. And he was pretty efficient, like a low average depth of target, but very efficient with all of those targets, caught 87.5% of his 56 targets. That was the highest catch rate among all wide receivers with 50 or more targets. He led that same group with a 141.5 passer rating when targeted, averaged seven yards after the catch per reception that was tied for fourth, and really reliable hands. Just a single drop last season. That is a 2% drop rate which was tied for the third lowest among wide receivers. I just think I'm looking at the offense. I'm looking at the rapport that Khalil Shakir seemed to build with Josh Allen, which I don't think the stat sheet really does it justice. I went back and I watched his snaps in the second half of last year, the targets. There was an innate trust level there that began to build leading up to the postseason. And you know what? We actually saw he wasn't super productive in the postseason, but he was a guy that Josh Allen was going to time and time again. And I think it's because of that reliability factor. And yeah, I'm all in on Khalil Shakir for a 2024 third year breakout. So the biggest thing here, first of all, let's mention the value where he's being drafted. He is currently wide receiver 62. I mean, that's shameful. It, shameful. It, it costs nothing, right? Now, the biggest concern here is, can he be more than just a slot receiver? Because if he's just going to play in the slot, I have some concerns because Dalton Kincaid is really a slot tight end. Like he does a lot of his work in the middle of the field. I kind of think Keon Coleman needs to be a slot receiver. They signed Curtis Samuel, who I think is really more of a slot receiver. So somebody's going to get squeezed here. But I also think there's an opportunity for one of these receivers to make some hay on the outside and I wonder if it's going to be Khalil Shakir. Now, if you look at the measurables, six foot, 196, ran a 4 40-yard dash. Now, that's not fantastic size for an outside receiver. But if you compare it to Stephon Diggs, who was six foot, 195, and ran a 4 4 40 yard dash, they're pretty comparable. Now, I'm not saying Khalil Shakir is going to be the next Stephon Diggs, but would it shock me if we saw an uptick of Khalil Shakir's reps on the outside. No, it wouldn't shock me at all. And that's what gets me excited. We were pairing him with a really good quarterback on a team that just lost like 150 targets in Stefan Diggs. I think there is a possibility that Khalil Shakir in year three 
makes a pretty big step forward. And could he be like a wide receiver four for you? I mean, that's that's the, the bar is pretty low here. Like for you to get, re, get your return on your investment here, all you need him to do is be like a serviceable wide receiver four. And I absolutely think he can do that for you. And here's the thing. When you're looking for some of these, you know, wide receiver sleepers, what I really want is a guy whose talent I believe in. And I, I do believe in the talent of Khalil Shakir. But I also want a guy who is maybe just located in a good offense with a very good quarterback. And yes, the, the bills, I do think in a similar way to like, let's compare the bills and the Packers who we just talked about in last segment. Like, I think similarly, like the, the room is kind of wide open in terms of who is going to take over this receiving core. I think all the same reasons that you are against Jane Reed also apply to the Bills offense here, but I think that's a I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing for Josh Allen in terms of not having to force feed any given target. He can play the field, he can make the reads and see who who's open and, and deliver the ball. And you know who had a very high open target rate last year was Khalil Shakir. So, like, mm. yeah, maybe you want to take the shot on Keon Coleman. Obviously, I think there's probably higher upside for Keon Coleman, but oh, again, yeah. you look at the the skill set of the wide receivers today as they stand Khalil Shakir is, is leaps and bounds ahead of Keon Coleman. I do, I'm not saying their skill sets necessarily overlap in a big way. We'll see how the bills want to deploy these guys, but like, I do think probably the, the best receivers on this team, it's Dalton Kincaid and Khalil Shakir for me right now. And Keon Coleman is more of the, developmental guy with high upside. I don't disagree. He's the, the great unknown here. He's only 20 years old. It wouldn't be surprising if Coleman struggled as a rookie, but we saw flashes that give us hope as we get into 2025. But I agree with you. I think there's a very good chance that Khalil Shakir and Dalton Cade combined for 250 targets this year. Maybe, yeah. maybe a little bit less than that, but around that number. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every single day. On tomorrow's show, we're going to look at three tight ends that are being drafted outside of the top 10 that we think can help you win your dynasty leagues next year. So make sure you guys are tuning in for that. Go download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. Go follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Majuk. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.